This job is hard. Being a public defender is hard. And for a lot of public defenders, I think it comes with a lot of sacrifices. I do have a family of my own. I do have children at home, and I do have to make sacrifices. Um, but I'm not the only one. And I think that's one way that Gideon's promise holds me accountable and helps keep me motivated to continue. Um, I, through Gideon's promise, have heard the stories and the struggles of other public defenders. I mean, there are public defenders who you know, I've ha I have friends that are public defenders who have come home at 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night from the office and their lights wouldn't come on. And we were pulling together as colleagues to help them pay that bill because public defenders are often not paid very well. Um, but the money is not what drives us and so we support one another. There are public defenders who have literally sacrificed their health um, doing this job. Um, there are also public defenders who have left this work and, you know, reflected upon their lives doing this work and realized that there was no greater fulfillment, no, no greater professional fulfillment that they've had since they've done public defender work um, or represented indigent clients. Whenever you're sitting there and you're looking in the face of another human being, because that's what our clients are, they're human beings, you learn so much more about them than what's in a police report or than what some prosecutor or judge has said about them. I think, unfortunately, the system is designed in such a way um, that allows other people not to recognize the humanity of our clients, right? I think all too often for prosecutors it's a matter of a conviction in trial numbers. I think unfortunately all too often for judges it's a matter of, you know, campaigns and poll numbers. For police officers it's appealing to the fear of the public and this possibility that they may become victimized and never in those equations is there a human being with life experiences or reasons um, given for why they are sitting across from me. And so when you spend time with the clients doing this kind of work, you learn their life stories, you know, you learn what their struggles are and you easily begin to understand and have compassion for what led up to them being in that place um, and what led up to them becoming your client. Once you know those things, I, I think you have an obligation to follow up. I think you have a duty to continue moving forward and representing them. I think it's hard not to know or not to pay attention. Um, and so you can't help but care. I don't think caring is a choice for a public defender, and if it is, it shouldn't be. Um, it is hard and it is stressful. Um, you know, a lot of public defenders have sacrificed, sacrificed their marriage. I mean, we have seen a lot of divorces in our community, um, and we have seen a lot of people just not get married. But I think collectively, I think because we are a collective group, I think when we reflect upon our own individual lives and we compare that to the lives that some of our clients live, they pale in comparison. And so while I do have a child or children and a husband at home that I have to explain where I'm going or why I'm going, they exist for me and that in and of itself is a blessing and that's not something I take for granted and it is something that I get to appreciate every single day when I go to work and I look at some of the faces of the clients that I represent. It keeps me in touch with humanity and it keeps me grateful for everything that I do have. Every person that comes through a criminal justice system needs a public defender that cares. They need someone who is concerned about them and their lives in what is usually one of the worst periods um, of their lives.